Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make your animated jeans and other tight clothing wrinkle like this. Enjoy! What's a foolproof way to make anything better? You add wrinkles! So today I'm going to show you how to make these jeans wrinkle like the ones you just saw in the animation and the same ones you're seeing right now. We're going to be doing a cloth sim and I'm going to show you how to make it work with tight clothes. Then to end off the video, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks I've found to help you animate with it. Alright, so you want to start off with a full character. As you can see right here, I have a full character and a full pair of pants. The first thing you want to do is take a look at what your pants' geometry looks like. Now this is important because a cloth sim works entirely on the geometry. It moves around all the vertices, so all these things, in such a way that it looks like cloth. So if there's not a lot of geometry, not a lot of vertices, then there's not a lot of information for it to work with and it won't look too good. So the more geometry there is, the more detailed, the more realistic it looks. But of course, too much geometry and it won't look good. We need to have more detail around the areas that need it. In this case, we're doing jeans. So where do jeans need the most detail? Well, right around the knees. So just go ahead and add those loop cuts and right around the hips. So now we have more geometry in the areas that are gonna include more wrinkles and so the details are gonna look more crisp. The next thing we wanna check here is, is your model at a real world scale? My model is 1.95 meters tall. So I've been working on my metric system and I know that is a very tall person, but they can in fact be a person. Just make sure that it's not super, super tiny. So if you're trying to make like a nano scale person, make sure he's not actually on the nano scale, otherwise the cloth sim won't work. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is get the legs deforming with the mesh properly. So I go into pose mode and I pose my mesh just real quick. As you can see, the pants are not following the body. So what we might be tempted to do is grab the pants, and then grab the rig, control P with automatic weights to get it working real quick and easy. And as you can see, it works pretty well. One thing we can do to improve it is check preserve volume. Maybe you wanna do that, maybe you don't. But there's actually a slightly better way. We're getting some slight areas where the body's actually showing through the jeans, which is what we're trying to avoid here. So one thing you can do to improve the way the jeans are actually deforming is if we set everything back to rest position, so nothing has changed. This is very important. Nothing has been deformed by the rig. So what we can actually do is transfer the weights from the body to the pants, depending on how close they are. So if I click the body and then the pants, enter weight paint mode, and then I click on weights, and then I transfer weights, and then I open up this transfer mesh data down here. We can switch it from nearest vertex to nearest face interpolated. And I switch from active layer to by name so that it, as you can see, it'll transfer the weights for the hips from the body to the weights for the hips on the pants and for all the other vertex weights that we see here. So now that that's done, we can actually enter pose mode again and deform it. And it should be a little bit better. It is slightly better. And then for the final improvement, what we can actually do is isolate the body here and we can actually just go ahead and delete all of the body that is covered by the pants. As you can see, there's no more body showing through the pants here, and it's even lighter for your computer. Time for the cloth sim. So the first thing I want to do is control one to add a subdivision surface modifier, and then I turn the render down one to match the viewport. So we're using the subdivision surface to give the cloth modifier more detail and more geometry to work with, but we actually do need to check the geometry density to see how much is actually there. So I go to object tab, and I click on wireframe, I can see how much density I have before the subdivision modifier, but then if I click optimal display, I can see how much I have with the subdivision surface modifier. So try to hit about this density for the same results that I get here. And then we can actually add our cloth modifier. So I click on physics and then cloth, then I can actually see there's a bunch of presets here. So I'm gonna click denim since we're making jeans, but there's a whole bunch of other presets, cotton, denim, leather, rubber, silk. That covers most things, I think. But if you wanna make something like paper that's not on there, I would recommend starting with one of these, probably leather, and then mess with the settings and see if you can get what you want. Then if I head down to shape, I can find something called pin group. And that takes a vertex group. So if I head over to vertex groups and I create a new group, I call it pin, head into edit mode, select everything and assign a weight of one. We can check that and see everything is red, meaning that every vertex in the mesh has a weight of one. So I'm gonna leave weight paint mode, head back to my cloth sim, find pin group, and assign it. So now we're telling the cloth simulation that every vertex in the mesh is pinned, meaning the cloth simulation has no influence over any of it. So if I go and I change my simulation start to an end to one to 10, now if I press play, I expect nothing to happen with my mesh. And as you can see, nothing happens. So in order to test our simulation, we need to make a short animation. So I'm gonna turn on auto keyframing. So I keyframe the rotation there and the rotation there. And then I go to about frame 10 and I rotate and rotate. And so now I have 
A quick little animation, the pants are not moving, and that's because the cloth simulation is currently baked, so if I hit it, then the pants would move. But if I go to cloth simulation, I delete the bake, and then I rebake it, as you can see, we get some movement. So wrinkles. How do we actually get them? Well, the secret actually is going to lie in the pin group. So we head back to wave paint mode. If you think about it, we want certain areas to not move and certain areas to move and to wrinkle up. So where do we want wrinkles to be? So if I set weight paint to zero and let's set strength really low, I can decrease the weights in the areas where I want the wrinkles. So if I start painting behind the knees, get it about to like a green. And then we're going to have wrinkles there. And the other area I wanted was at around the hips. So if I decrease the pin group weight around here and around the side, we'll get wrinkles around there as well. And then finally, I want to decrease the weights generally around the rest of the mesh, except for areas where there'd be a stretch. So that'll be at the front of the knees and the butt. So if I just decrease the weights everywhere else but those areas, so I can get slightly better simulations also around the calves that's an area where it sometimes depending on how big calves the character has will bulge out and stretch and then behind on the hamstrings make sure you get in between and that looks pretty good if i leave weight paint mode delete the bake and then i rebake it we get wrinkles but this doesn't look very good now does it we're getting a lot of crushing around the hip and some really sharp shapes right here. So the secrets that I've found to actually fixing this with these tight clothes are, let me just delete the bake. If you increase the stiffness on the pin group, I think I did like 15 and I rebake it. That'll help a bunch. As you can see, it's a lot better. That fixes the knees a lot, but at the hip, it's still not great. So the other thing that you can do is click internal springs and then bake it again. And look at that, it's a lot better. So if I just click between, as you can see, the shape stays pretty much the same, but we have wrinkles. So depending on how tight your clothing is, you can mess with the stiffness on the shape. Uh, I would leave internal springs on since it's a tight piece of clothing. It helps it seem like there's a person inside the clothes and they won't flop around as much. But I, yeah, the main thing would be the stiffness here so it retains the shape better. And then finally, this is looking pretty jaggedy. After your cloth sim, what you're usually going to want to do is add another subdivision modifier. So if I go to add modifier and I go to subdivision surface and probably about two. And let me just turn off the wireframe now. I don't think we really need it anymore. And looking in between the subdivisions, it looks a lot better. So you're going to want to only turn that one on and render. And another thing is to actually look at this smooth modifier. So I put that before and see it, it kind of makes it look a little less bulgy. Like it, it shrinks it down to closer to the original size. So you can take a look at that depending on what you want. And then finally, let's say you have an animation and it starts out in a pose that's not the default pose. But as you can see, I start out with wrinkles. I'm actually starting at frame 18. So you'd want to set a frame zero to be your default pose so that you can simulate up until the point where you start. So you start with good wrinkles and then just let it run through the rest of the animation and everything should turn out great. And with that, get out there and animate something awesome.